These are the differences between Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and there really are a lot of them. So, starting up with the first one, we have ourselves the most obvious one, that's got to be the character artwork from Sugimori. See, in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, both May and Brendan have a majority red outfit with specific poses, whereas in Pokemon Emerald, the outfit has been fully changed with green elements to fit with the Emerald theme. Uh, oddly enough, though, there wasn't a blue version or something for Sapphire, but they just stuck with the red outfit for both Ruby and Sapphire, even though the sprites actually also remain red as well. And if you mirror the two next to each other, you'll see how similar they are to their official artworks as well. The intro sequence, though you may not notice it at first, there are minor differences between the intro to Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Now, if you play Ruby version, you will actually see Latios, and if you play Sapphire, you will see Latias flying by the player. And in the opening sequence of Pokemon Emerald, you actually also have some differences that aren't in Ruby and Sapphire. As the player is cycling on their bike, we can see Pokemon following the player alongside the road as you move forward, such as Manectric, Flygon, and also your starter Pokemon. Something that isn't present in Ruby and Sapphire intros and, of course, the title screens for all three games are different, with, of course, you know, Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza all showing up. Now, towards the later half of the intro of Ruby and Sapphire, it actually shows battles with the starters, whereas in Emerald, instead of the starters, it shows us both Groudon and Kyogre, as well as Rayquaza, flying down to quell their battle, something that happens later in the game. Speaking of which, what about version exclusives? Well, to start with, Ruby and Sapphire have a few differences between them. In Ruby, the exclusives are Seadot, Nuzleaf, Shiftry, Mobile, Zangoose, Solrock, and Latios, plus, of course, Ground on the Legendary. Whereas in Pokemon Sapphire, the exclusives are Lotad, Lombre, Ludicolo, Sableye, Seviper, Lunatone, and of course, Latias, and we can't forget about Kyogre as the Legendary. A cool addition that was added to Emerald, which wasn't in Ruby and Sapphire, has to be the inclusion of a free gift Pokemon from Johto, that being the starters, Cyndaquil, Totodile, and Chikorita. All three could be acquired from the Professor Birch after obtaining every Pokemon in the Hoenn Pokedex, excluding, of course, Deoxys and Jirachi. But once you've done that, you can get one of the Johto starters. Now, Latios and Latias, some of the obvious differences that are found here. To coincide with the release of the Latios and Latias movie, you were actually able to capture one of them per game, and it really depended on the version of the game you had. But for Emerald, they made it so that you can actually choose which of the two you want to hunt right after leaving the Hall of Fame. And the second one would instead be found on Southern Island and would require Acquire the promotional item, the Eon ticket, uh, which some of you may know uh, was needed to get. There's also a few Pokemon that were impossible to get in Emerald and were only appearing in Ruby and Sapphire, so you have to actually send them over. That being Surskit, Masquerain, Meditite, Medicham, Roselia, Zangoose, and Lunatone. All those guys were not available in Emerald version. Of course, we can't forget about the Battle Frontier, which was a great addition added to Emerald, but that we unfortunately never saw in Ruby and Sapphire. And the thing is, the Battle Frontier actually replaced the Battle Tower from Ruby and Sapphire. See, Ruby and Sapphire had their own version of the Battle Frontier, but it just wasn't as interesting. It was the Battle Tower, and it was south of Route 130. However, with the addition of Pokemon Emerald, we actually got the Battle Frontier, which expanded on everything, okay? In the Battle Tower, all you could really do is take on a few battles, you had some battle points. There were some minuscule amounts of things to do and some symbol challenges that were available in that specific version of the games that you could do against Annabelle. However, in Emerald, they changed it up and they made it massive. They made the Battle Frontier huge. They added way more stuff to do. They changed the design of the whole location. And overall, they just made the Battle Frontier a better place than the Battle Tower. But that's just one of the things they changed. Of course, added in also the Artisan Cave in the Battle Frontier, which was a new location to go and catch Smurgle in. We can't forget about the Pomeg glitch. Now, the Pomeg glitch is really weird because this glitch is actually exclusive to Pokemon Emerald, Diamond, and Pearl, as well as Platinum, which is really weird that it stayed in those other three games, but in Emerald, it is available. Now, it's a weird glitch, and I'm not really going to go into exactly how to do it, but basically, it allows you to battle with an egg, and it's a little bit weird, it's a little bit odd, and it's a berry glitch, so you guys have probably heard about it before. However, it wasn't in Ruby and Sapphire, and I'm just going to tell you like this, there are a lot of glitches and bugs that exist specifically in Ruby Sapphire but don't exist in Emerald. And I'm not going to go through all of them because there's just literally too many to mention and there's too many on either side that will be hard to compare. But overall, there are a plethora of them and I'll put all the glitches on the screen here so you guys can see which ones are actually in the different games.
An interesting difference is actually Wally. See, normally Wally in Ruby and Sapphire battles you at the end of the Victory Road. However, in Emerald, he instead battles you at the beginning of the Victory Road, which is actually kind of better because it allows you to go and heal yourself up before taking on the rest of the Victory Road. Whereas in the past, when he beats you at the end or battles you at the end, you gotta go all the way back from the Pokemon Center just to be able to get to the exit again, which is really frustrating. But yeah, Wally's been changed. Now, there are loads of trainers that have been added in new zones, and you can get far more double battles, but also team changes have been made to a lot of the NPCs. I'm not really going to go into exactly all of them, but there's also been changes to certain NPCs, and overall, it's just good changes to make the game a bit more challenging. In Emerald, they actually added a set of three new NPCs, which is really interesting, and they can all be found in Lily Cove's Pokemon Center. And the thing with them is that they will change depending on your character's trainer ID. Now, one of them is the Contest Lady that just steals Pokeblocks from you. The other one is the Favor Lady that gives you vitamins, and at the end, you have the Quiz Lady with questions and rewards if you answer her questions correctly. There was a strange little change made to the Regis in specifically Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. See, in Ruby and Sapphire, when you want to get the Regis, you got to have a Relicanth and a Waylord in your team. And you got to put Relicanth first and Waylord second or last, sorry. And then if you're doing it in Emerald, they actually just reversed it. You got to put Waylord first and Relicanth last, which is random, but yes, they changed it to make sure that it was a little bit different when you do the puzzle this time, which I don't know why, but they just did it. Next up is obviously the differences between Team Aqua and Team Magma. Obviously, these are kind of straightforward, but in Ruby, you have, well, Team Magma, and in Sapphire, you have Aqua. And in Emerald, there is a mix of both teams appearing quite often, though you do encounter Aqua a bit more, I would say, but nonetheless, you do run into both teams at times. Another big difference is in the Pokemon used by Brendan and May during their rival battles if you battle them. Now, if you battle either of them in Ruby and Sapphire, they will always use the starter Pokemon that's strongest against you. But there's also a difference in Pokemon they catch. As in Ruby and Sapphire, they use Whalmer, Shroomish, and a starter Pokemon for their second battle. Whereas in Emerald, that same battle will differ for each starter chosen. So if you choose the Trico, then Brendan will use a Lotad and a Torchic. However, if he chose Torchic, then he uses a Slugma and a Mudkip rather than the low tad and the torchic, but it doesn't end there. If you chose Mudkip, then Brendan uses a Wingle and a Trico, and this continues until the fifth and final battle, where Brendan will use a combination of Tropius, Pelipper, Ludicolo, Slugma, as well as a starter Pokemon, with one of his Pokemon being removed at each battle, making it a very different one from the battles in Ruby and Sapphire, where Brendan uses Swellow, Nummel, Whalmer, Shroomish, and a starter of his choice, or her choice if it's May. Nonetheless, though, they did make the trainer battles at least a little bit different between Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Champion differences. See, in Ruby and Sapphire, when you reach the Elite Four, you'll battle against Steven Stone as the champion of Hoenn. However, in Emerald, they changed this and instead made Wallace the champion. However, Wallace was in Ruby and Sapphire as well. Just there, he was the gym leader of Satopolis City, which, by the way, has now changed its gym leader to a man named Juan, who doesn't exist at all in Ruby and Sapphire whatsoever. Speaking of Wallace, his team from his gym differs quite a bit from his champion team. See, his Satopolis gym team consists of Lubdisk, Celio, Seeking, Wishcash Melodic, whereas his champion team in Evergrande City has now evolved his Whalmer as he has a Waylord. He also has a Tentacruel, a Ludicolo, Wishcash is still there, Gyarados, and Melodic is still on the team. Steven Stone, on the other hand, is no longer the champion in, of course, Emerald. However, he has an exclusive event for only him in Emerald, and that is the battle against him in the Meteor Falls. If you head behind the waterfalls and then go to the back of the cave inside the falls, you'll find Steven Stone looking into a wall. If you talk to him and battle him, he will essentially give you a battle that's the same team that he used during his champion battle in Ruby and Sapphire, but his levels will be much higher. Now, earlier we spoke of Juan, who is one of the differences in gym leaders, but he's not the only big difference in the gym leaders. There were actually loads of changes made to the gyms. The first one is going to be Rossboro City Gym, where there is now an extra hiker trainer added in Emerald to make it a total of three battles, which were all able to be avoided. However, in Ruby and Sapphire, the design of the gym and the actual textures are far darker in design. And in Emerald, the gym badge design can be seen behind Roxanne. Actually, this is in all the gyms now. 
But another difference is Roxanne using an extra Geodude on her team, but lowering the levels of both her Geodudes now to 12 rather than 14, with no spas being identical, with only really changing one thing, which is having a hold item on it now. Duford City Gym also has massive changes. There are six trainer battles inside the gym, and the design is far different from the one found in Ruby and Sapphire. Speaking of which, Broly, well, he has a matchup and a Makuhita in Ruby and Sapphire, but in Emerald, he also uses a Meditite on his team as well. Mobile is next, and for this gym, the changes were more minimal, I would argue. They added some more conducting, like, poles for electricity, and instead of just having Watson chilling on the ground, he now has a platform with, of course, his gym badge seen behind him. He also has a big change in his team. In Ruby, he mainly has Magnemite, Voltorb, and Magneton, but in Emerald, they removed the one Magnemite and instead gave him a Manectric and Electrike addition, making him far more difficult. As for Flannery and her gym in Lava Ridge, they really decided to complicate the puzzle of the gym in Emerald. As you can see, there are very clear differences in the design between Emerald and Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, speaking of Ruby and Sapphire, her team here consisted of two Slugmas and a single Torkoal, but for Emerald, they added in a Nummel, Camerupt, and kept a Torkoal and only one single Slugma, which I think is way better than just repeating the same Pokemon. Next, of course, you'd be battling your dad in Petalburg. However, well, Norman, well, her, his gym has actually had only really some subtle changes, as they made the colors of the floor slightly different, and the overall colors look far more orange in design as opposed to Ruby and Sapphire. However, Norman's team actually got a downgrade in my opinion. In Ruby and Sapphire, he uses two Slackings and a single Vigoroth. However, in Emerald, he instead had way more variety, which yes, I said a second ago is a better thing, with Spinda, Linoon being included alongside Vigoroth and a single Slacking. It's just that Slacking is so strong, but this Slacking instead gets a Citrus Berry on it as well. Moving on to Fortree City, here we find Winona. The gym had a massive rework, and it's actually inverted. See, in Emerald, compared to the design in Ruby, you can actually see that they've more or less inverted it, but also included far more trainers to be found inside the gym compared to the Ruby Sapphire version. Winona's team in Ruby and Sapphire also consists of Swellow, Pelipper, Skarmory, and Altaria, whereas in Emerald, she uses Swablu, Tropius, Pelipper, Skarmory, and Altaria, and also the Altaria is holding an Orenberry. Finally, we have Moss Deep City, which obviously has Tate and Lisa. Now, this gym has got the biggest difference in design compared to all the other ones that I've mentioned, besides maybe the literal gym change in Sotopolis City, but that's besides the point. The design of Ruby and Sapphire has you moving around some spinning plates that take you to, you know, basically around the gym and eventually take you to Tate and Lisa, uh, which is kind of similar to the puzzle you find, and of course, uh, you know, if you're playing, ever played Fire Red Leaf, it's the same puzzle when you're dealing with Team Rocket, but what's interesting is in Emerald instead, you use teleporters and similar kind of rotating objects to get you all the way to Tate and Lisa, making for a drastically different experience. But that's not the only big difference. There's another change that's been made. Now these two, it's really weird, but in Ruby and Sapphire, when you battled them, they only use a level 42 Soul Rock and a level 42 Lunatone, and that's it. However, in Emerald, Thank the Lord they changed it and they actually gave them an extra Claydol and Zatu as well as two Citrus Berries to be held by Solrock and Lunal, Lunaturn. But it, it just, why was there only those two Pokemon? It's just really weird to me. Finally, there is Sotopolis City, which obviously has changes as well. The first one has got to be the fact that Wallace is the gym leader in Ruby and Sapphire and Juan takes over in Emerald. But the gym itself changes as well and is actually inverted somewhat in Emerald compared to Ruby and Sapphire as they change the ice puzzle as well as the trainers found at the bottom floor as well. Overall, it's some decent changes. Moving on, we do have some changes made to the Elite Four as well. Now, first up is the Victory Road, which only really had some minor graphical improvements that are changed between Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. The entrance to the Elite Four and the League, where you, well, heal yourself up, is also slightly different. See, in Emerald, you have the stairs that lead up to the room where you Wi-Fi battle with other trainers and do trading, whereas in Ruby and Sapphire, that place doesn't even exist. Then we have the Elite Four themselves. First of all, all their loom rooms look the same in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald, so there was no changes made to the rooms of the Elite Four themselves. However, their teams are a bit different. Sydney, for example, has a Mighty Yina, Cacturn, Shiftry, Sharpedo, and Absol in Ruby and Sapphire. However, in Emerald, he instead uses Mighty Yina, 
Again, Shiftry, Cacturn, Absol, and instead of a Sharpedo, he now has a Crawdont on his team instead. We're going to skip over Phoebe's and Glacius teams because they're mostly the same. However, Drake is a little bit different. He does have some changes. He normally uses a Shellgon, Altaria, and two Flygons with a single Salamence in his team in Ruby and Sapphire. However, in Emerald, one of his Flygons is replaced by a Kingdra instead. Finally, when you reach the Champion's Room, we have some massive changes, I would say. In Ruby and Sapphire, the room is more pink in color and in design, and it all matches with Steven Stone's, well, attire and how he looks, and also the fact that he's looking for rocks and pink stuff. My point is, it actually matches him. Whereas in Emerald, the design of the room mirrors the water types used by Wallace, the champion, far more. Like, it matches well with his actual Pokemon battle style. So far, we've talked a lot about the gyms and the Elite Four, but what about the rest of the world and Hoenn in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald? Well, there are differences all over the place. Starting off, when you're in your home in Ruby and Sapphire, if you go to the house, you will notice that the textures of the sprites will actually be different colors, but that's not all. You also have a red carpet in Ruby and Sapphire, but in Emerald, the carpet is actually blue instead. Even outside the house in Little Root Town, you will find a large amount of changes. The flowers have changed from the ones we see in Ruby and Sapphire. They are more dark in color now, but that's not all. The Machokes inside your house are now gone and have been changed to Vigoroths that are moving around the boxes as well. So, uh, really random, but it is a change nonetheless. But it doesn't end there. Moving up towards Route 101, where you get your Sada, when Professor Birch is being attacked, and Ruby and Sapphire, he's being hunted by a Poochina. But in Emerald, they changed it to a Zigzagoon instead, which to me doesn't really make as much sense. I feel like a Puccino would be more dangerous, but I digress. Moving on to Route 103, we'll see another massive route change. First up, in Ruby and Sapphire, if you check the route for the most part, it'll be identical to Emerald. However, in Emerald, there was a special edition which normally doesn't appear, and that is the presence of the Altering Cave. Now, it will only appear after entering the Hall of Fame, and inside you'll find the unreleased event, that being the plan to include this as a location to catch Pokemon that weren't available in Johto, sorry, in Hoenn from Johto, like Mareep, Apom, Pineco, Shuckle, as well as Teddy Urza, Houndor, Stantler, and Smurgle. However, in Emerald, most of these can instead be found in the Safari Zone, except for Smurgle, who is instead found in the Artisan Cave in the Battle Frontier, as mentioned previously. Instead, the cave is just filled with Zubats, since the event was actually cancelled, and Nintendo never completed it. And this event, this cave, doesn't even exist at all in Ruby and Sapphire. Another set of exclusive cave or caves which you can find in Emerald are the Marine Cave and the Terra Cave. Now these two will only appear in Emerald and not Ruby and Sapphire as they are the locations of Kyogre and Groudon in Emerald. They're the only place you can go and find those two. Now the Marine Cave for example needs to be located by going to the Hoenn Weather Institute and being told about abnormal weather conditions and if you head to one of the four routes you'll find the Marine Cave and there's specifically four routes you can go to. If you go through these routes underwater you will go and for example on Route 105 in Emerald, you can dive under the water and find the Marine Cave, whereas in Ruby and Sapphire, there aren't even any dive spots in these areas normally. As for the Terra Cave, which holds Groudon, this one is always found above ground and also works the same way. Gotta go to the Weather Institute, and then eventually you can find them. Like I said, these two caves don't exist because instead, Groudon and Kyogre will simply be found inside of the Cave of Origin instead. Now, speaking of Groudon and Kyogre, obviously in Ruby and Sapphire, you can only get one of each. But that's not all. In Ruby version, if you head to the Cave of Origin, where you would capture this fella, you get to the bottom fourth floor where Groudon is located, and the puddle in the middle will be made out of lava, and the overall room will have lava rocks all over it that are red. However, if you do the same in Sapphire version, you will instead find a puddle of water and blue colored gems around the room, which is really cool. But they made it even more interesting. See, in Emerald, there is another change. There's only the existence of the bottom first floor, which is essentially a really cool decision and actually features blue and red gems on each side of the room to represent both Ruby and Sapphire because basically Emerald is a combination of the two. But there was also an unused asset in Emerald that featured the same design as the Pokemon Ruby version, which was probably just a leftover that they didn't end up using. Next up is Sky Pillar and the whole story event with Rayquaza. You see, in Ruby and Sapphire, Sky Pillar looks exactly the same, but in Ruby and Sapphire, you can't even enter Sky Pillar until you enter the Hall of Fame. And at the top, it looks a lot different than the one for Emerald. See, in Emerald, you've got to go to Sky Pillar first and find Rayquaza. And 
cause it to fly to Sotopolis City to stop the battle between Groudon and Kyogre, which plays a unique special animated sequence that isn't available in Ruby and Sapphire. Also, Sky Pillar can be entered a second time in Emerald, and that is after Rayquaza is awakened and you've met Wallace at the Cave of Origin. However, the first time you enter the tower, it is far less broken down and you didn't need to use a Mac bike to reach the top. But after Rayquaza gets awakened, it breaks down the tower and it visually changes the location quite a bit. The PokéNav, the navigation app used to make calls and check your map in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald, did have some changes made in Emerald which are, well, functionally a bit different and of course aesthetically different. See, in Ruby and Sapphire we have the Trainer's Eye feature which has 69 unique trainers, yes, 69, I know, funny, either way, which will alert you when they want to rematch you. However, in Emerald, this was changed to the Match Call or rather match call was added alongside a trainer's eye where you can now actually call anyone that you wanted that you had in your PokéNav numbers for a battle yourself so you could both be called and make calls to other people also in Pokemon Emerald trainers registered with the PokéNav's match call function will actually call you more often if a Pokemon with the ability lightning rod is actually leading your team or your party of course, we already talked about, you know, specifically Team Aqua and Team Magma a little bit earlier, but there are actually different things that can be found. Individual scenes for Ruby and Sapphire, depending on the version, and these differences show up in the later half, and most, of course, will be when you run into Team Aqua and Sapphire, and more often, you'll run into Magma and Ruby, whereas in Emerald, there is a mix of both. I already mentioned this a little bit before, but there are changes, like, for example, if we're talking about the Oceanic Museum being taken over, of course, in Ruby, it's going to be Magma, in Sapphire, it's going to be Aqua. Now, we already mentioned the Meteor Falls earlier and finding Steven there, but the actual location as well looks totally different in Ruby and Sapphire compared to Emerald, which the whole area has now changed in its sprite art to look darker and more purple compared to Ruby and Sapphire, which makes it just look really yellow. So this is a massive change, which is easy to not notice at first. One special area that isn't found in Ruby and Sapphire is the Magma Hideout, found at the base of Mount Chimney, where you will need to enter to continue your story in the game. Now, this location also holds four Pokemon in its wild, that being Torkoal, Geodude, Graveler, and Slugma, which, again, it's an interesting thing they did here. They decided to actually give a proper location for Team Magma to have one of their bases, because normally, the other base that you'd find would kind of match better with Team Aqua, and we're going to talk about that one. So speaking about that, there is a special hideout in Ruby and Sapphire, and that is the specifically Team Aqua or Team Magma hideout, depending on the game. See, in Ruby and Sapphire, depending on the game, you will actually find their hideouts in the same exact location, just east of Lily Cove City in the water. If you play Ruby, it will be the hideout of Team Magma. However, if you play Sapphire, it will instead be rebranded as the Aqua hideout and even have some slight differences in its design. But funny enough, though, it fits Aqua way better. Like, Team Aqua makes way more sense for this hideout because it's on the water. It's like out in the ocean. Whereas, when we look at Pokemon Emerald, they made a real proper Team Magma hideout, which made way more sense to me. We already spoke about this a little bit, but there are tons of sprite changes in Ruby and Sapphire compared to Emerald. See, they changed the little root boxes that inform you on trainer tips. There's also a change in the trees found between the games, as well as some of the flowers sprites actually being heavily changed as well. And I can't even talk about all the plethora of houses and overall textures that have been changed. There's also some sprite changes of some of the Pokemon. War Turtle, for example, is more purple in Emerald compared to Ruby and Sapphire, and even looks kind of shiny. There's also more vibrant versions of Caterpie in Ruby and Sapphire. Lickitung also changes slightly, and Jinx has a more bright skin tone, as well as Snorlax losing its smile and looking like it just can't get up in Emerald. But yeah, there are some sprite changes that are pretty crazy. Now, the Abandoned Ship is a place in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, which can be found on Route 108. There are quite a few changes made here when you actually compare it. See, in Ruby and Sapphire, you have a far fewer floors as the B1F floor, or bottom first floor, on the east side of the ship, and the underwater segment are far smaller compared to Emerald. But also, there are far fewer rooms and trainer battles as well. Also in Ruby and Sapphire, Tuber Charlie is affected by a minor glitch, which also affects Aroma Lady Rose on Route 118 and Gentleman Walter on Route 121. Because he always approaches the player, if he catches sight of them, he will essentially walk right through the wall if it's not in front of him. This glitch was actually corrected in Emerald, as well as a Spanish version of Ruby and Sapphire, but it's just a weird little fact. Now, this segment's gonna be long, but let's break down each and every single one of the cities in Ruby and Sapphire and their changes. See, in Little Root Town, the houses in Ruby and Sapphire look the same, but have been changed in Emerald, where the roof is now different and the flowers on the ground are also different and look different in design. Old Dale Town is more or less the same, but again, the roofs of the houses are again changed in Emerald. 
looking at Rustboro, we can actually see a massive difference in the residential building on the left side of the city, giving it windows and making it look a little bit better in Emerald. Slateport City has had massive change. You see the colors of the marketplace, where you have all the tents, are now blue rather than green like in Ruby and Sapphire. They also changed up the colors of the Name Raider house, and there was also a removal of some of the grass on the right side of the actual city, and now they have, a, you know, basically the boathouse now has no grass, and they've actually added several boats on the edge on the ocean there. In Verdendorf Town, they changed the contest hall design, but the rest of the area remained the same besides some changes to the flowers. Instead, we got the battle tent instead of the actual place you go to to do your contests. Same thing in Falibor Town, they changed the contest hall, but now we have a battle tent, but on the bottom of the house, they actually changed its chimney to a different design. Super small detail, but kind of interesting. Now, Satopolis City is really funny because all they really did was change some of the little houses, made them a little bit smaller, removed some elements from them around the city, and then also changed their positions all around the place. For the most part, though, the rest of it stays the same. And also, the gym entrance has an entrance panel, which tells you about the gym. Well, that one's actually been moved slightly. Rusturf Tunnel probably has the um, one of the heaviest changes, similar to many of the other caves in the game which have changed, but basically they fully changed the textures used inside of the cave, which made it look drastically different and far better. Like, Emerald looks way better, no question about it. Then we also have Moss Deep City, where we have the space station that's now changed and also looks slightly different in design. Now, as you heard earlier, a lot of the contest halls are actually gone or seemingly just missing in Emerald, but that's not 100% true. They were actually replaced by the battle tents, but that's not 100% accurate either. There is still one contest hall left, and that can be found in Lily Cove City, where you can go and compete, and it functions the same way as it did in Ruby and Sapphire. Trainer Hill is also a new addition to Emerald that's not found in Ruby and Sapphire. Now, this is a function and a place added in Fire Red and Leaf Green as well, where you basically climb several floors and battle trainers with the final floor just having a person congratulating you, and that's all. Yeah, kind of lame. He doesn't give you a reward, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Mirage Tower is another location added in Emerald and that is not in Ruby and Sapphire, which is a giant tower that you can enter. If you reach the top of it, you can get one of two fossils, the Root Fossil or the Claw Fossil. The tower will then afterwards just dissipate and destroy itself. Also, inside of the tower, the only things you can find are Sand Shrews and Trap Inch Encounters. Following that up, we have another thing and that's going to be Naval Rock. Well, it's a location exclusive to Fire Red, Leaf Green, and of course, Emerald, and was not available in Ruby and Sapphire. Now, if you had your hands on the Mystic Ticket from the Mystery Gift, then using it, you could sail to the island on board of the SS Tidal. On the island itself, you can encounter Lugia at the bottom 14th floor and ho -Oh on the 4th floor, and they will respawn after you enter the Hall of Fame if you do battle or catch either of them, which is pretty awesome. Another island event that isn't possible in Ruby and Sapphire has got to be Birth Island, the location of Deoxys. Which, speaking of Deoxys, in Emerald, they also added a speed form of Deoxys, which wasn't in Ruby and Sapphire. Either way, Birth Island needs a Aurora ticket from the Mystery Gift to be possible to reach. While there, you gotta do a puzzle and then get your hands on Deoxys. Fear not, did you think that was the only island? Nope, we have one more island that's exclusive to Emerald and not in Ruby and Sapphire, and that is Faraway Island, the location of none else than the mythical Pokemon Mew. And the island can also be only reached with the old sea map from an official Nintendo Mystery Gift event. But there are even more areas exclusive to Emerald, and one of them is the Desert Underpass found in Falibor Town. If you enter one of the houses here, you first gotta make sure you actually defeated the Elite Four, but if you go inside this house and find the Desert Underpass, this is the location of multiple Dittos, Wishmer and Loudred, as well as the missing fossil from the Mirage Tower after it crumbled, so you can go there to get both the fossil Pokémon. There's also a funny and cool change to the fifth puzzle inside of the Trick House. Now, the Trick House is a location that you can go to and do some puzzles for some rewards. Now, they changed the design of actually one of the rooms, specifically the fifth puzzle, where in specifically, um, I guess, in Emerald, you have two exclamation marks as the design of the room, but in the Ruby and Sapphire version it is a question mark, which is kind of cool. And then there is the Safari Zone. To start with, the design of the actual Safari Zone is actually the same in both Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. However, in Emerald, after you beat the Elite Four, you also get access to an expanded version of the Safari Zone that makes it larger for more exploration, making for a really cool addition and difference. 